Good morning, Oak Park Church. We hope you're doing well this morning. We hope that you have had a great week. Uh, we just welcome you to Oak Park Church this morning. Uh, a little different uh, than weeks past. Uh, I'm standing here looking at an empty auditorium, uh, but God is still on the throne and God is still good. We just want to thank you for joining us this morning on behalf of Pastor David Smith, our lead pastor. Uh, welcome. Uh, to uh, Oak Park Church, our online services for this week. Uh, hopefully in the next week or so we can be back in the building, but uh, stay informed through emails and social media. Uh, we'll get that word out to you um, here soon. But my name is uh, Pastor Shane Jones. I'm the executive pastor here at Oak Park. and uh, It's an honor and privilege to be standing before you today, even though I'm looking at two cameras. Uh, and I don't see your faces. It's an honor. Uh, to stand here today uh, and to bring what God has uh, really put in my spirit. Um, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday or this week, God really spoke to me, uh, really made uh, what I was supposed to preach about very clear. Uh, but my prayer this morning is I hope that I honor Him uh, and uh, give Him all the honor and the glory this morning. If you're watching, always, as we ask, hit the like button. Uh, share it, uh, not because I'm preaching, but let's get it out to m as many people as we can. Uh, you have friends and family that, that we're not friends with, and uh, the more you share, the more people that watch it, and the more the uh, the good news goes uh, around the world this morning. So uh, if you have your Bibles, please take them out this morning. Uh, gather your family around um, on the couch, in the bedroom, wherever you're watching from this morning. Take your Bibles, turn to James chapter 5 this morning. Um, very familiar scripture this morning, but uh, what God has put in my spirit and uh, has really challenged me over the past probably five days to do, and uh, maybe I can challenge you this morning, and uh, we can uh, work through this together. So if you have your Bibles, James chapter 5 this morning, starting in verse number 13, it says, anyone among you suffering, let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up. And if you have committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. It did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. I want to talk this morning on the title, Prayer Changes Things. Prayer Changes Things out of two, two verses in there. In verse number 14, it says, If any among you are sick, let him call the elders of the church, let him pray. Anointing them with all in the name of the Lord. And then also out of verse number I think it is 16, yes. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray one another to be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. If you with us want to stretch your hands towards the TV or a computer, whatever you're watching, I'm going to pray for you if you'll pray for me this morning. Father, I thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Father, for your spirit. Thank you, God, for your love and for your mercy and from your grace. Thank you, Father God, that you sent your son, God, to die on the cross for me. A person that wasn't worthy, God, but you did it for me, God, that I may have a place in heaven. And, Father, I pray today, God, that you will anoint my lips, Father God. Don't let it be me that's speaking, but let you be speaking through me. Father God, I pray, God, that you give us the hearts to receive and our ears to hear, God, what you have laid on our heart today. I just thank you for what you've done. Thank you for everyone that's watching. I pray that you bless them and keep them safe, we ask. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. And everybody says amen this morning. So. This morning, I want to talk to you just for a few moments on about prayer. Um, I'm sure people that are watching are, are that you pray, and you pray um, diligently, and you pray for uh, things in your life. But I want to talk for the next few moments just about prayer. What is prayer? What does prayer mean? How can we pray? When should we pray? And what should we pray for? So uh, prayer changes things. What is prayer? Prayer is an interact, inter, interacting with God through spontaneous individual form of petitioning and or thinking. Uh, thinking. I, I want to stop just for a moment and hit this point before I even get started. And I'm going to try not to preach before I kind of give an intro, but God really quickened my spirit this week with this. A lot of times when we pray, we pray because we want something. 
We pray because we need something. We pray because maybe we're in a desperate time of our season in a life that we're living in, and we need a touch from God. And that's okay. Please don't get me wrong. But I think nine times out of ten, we need to reverse that. We need to start thanking God for what we have instead of asking God for what we don't have. Thanksgiving to God. Give thanks for the, for the things that you do have. Clothes on your back and shoes on your feet and food on your table to eat. And, and you got up this morning and you were able to turn the lights on in your house. And you were able to get up this morning and go turn the water on and, and brush your teeth and take a bath and, and even get food out of the pantry this morning. We ought to start thanking God for the little things before we start asking God for the big things. Amen. Now we'll get back to my intro. God really quickened me in my spirit this week, guys, about start thinking, thanking, thanking him instead of asking so much. If we start thanking him, then he'll start giving to us this morning. So prayer is a, a spontaneous individual form of petition and or thanking to God. The, uh, the late Billy Graham said this uh, um, years ago, I wish I'd have prayed more than I'd preached. And that kind of hit me last night as, as Teresa sent that to me. Man, what a strong statement. One of the best evangelists ever to, to walk. One of the most powerful men in, in the gospel said he wished he'd have prayed more than he'd have preached. Guys, we've got to get back to the root of all of this, okay? We've got to get back to the foundation. And what is the foundation? The foundation is, one, the Word of God, and the foundation is also prayer, We've got to get on our knees, and we have got to pray more. We've got to seek his face. We've got to start thanking him for things instead of asking him for things. God is a good God, and God is a great God, and God will answer your prayers eventually. But we've got to start thanking him instead of asking him. God is awesome. He's all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He knows what's going to happen before we do. So we've got to get on our knees, fall before, our, fall before his feet, and ask him to be with us. Prayer is a privilege. Prayer is a privilege. In the beginning, uh, in the book of James, we're warned about being double-minded Christians. We're to pray and with our doubts in our hearts. And then at the end of this letter, we discover the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous man. Once again, his roots are trusting God and believing in his word. I'll ask you this question this morning. Do you truly trust God? Right now, we're in a season of our life where the virus is, is outraging and, and there's social injustice and there's racism and there's all kinds of things in our world that's going on right now. And it's easy, guys, to trust the Lord when things are going good. It's easy to trust God when everything's okay and nobody's sick and, and nobody's in a hospital and you don't need anything. But what happens when your family gets sick? What happens when a loved one's in the hospital? What happens when the bills don't know if they're going to get paid or not? Do we truly trust God? I can ask everybody that's watching this morning. And you say, oh, yeah, I trust God. But you trust God in difficult times. It's easy to trust God when things are equal, going good, but you, do you trust God when things are difficult? Do you trust thank God when things are tough? Do you trust God when your body's sick and you're hurting and you don't feel like getting up there in the morning and doing on and doing your job or going about your daily activity? Do you truly trust God? Some today call for a healing service. We get in our cars, we go to a religious site, and we attend healing services. Trust me, don't get me wrong. That's okay. But James gives us very simple instructions here. The sick person should call on the elders. Very simple. Right here in your home church. If you're saved and you're sanctified and you're filled, you've got the same spirit I've got, same power I've got, and we've got the same power that Jesus had. We can lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. But we've got to believe. I don't believe we believe sometimes. I don't believe that we believe that, that, that we have the power. in the universe. Maybe we don't feel worthy. But we've got the power. God is with us. God is by our side. Sickness, and I'm going to try to say this word without messing it all up. Asthenio, okay? Asthenio means, it's another word for sick, means weak, feeble, without strength, or without power. I'll tell you this morning, you have power. We must spend more time thanking God rather than asking God. We must pray daily. We must pray without ceasing. We must pray every moment of every day. You must pray as you get up, and you must pray as you lay down. You must pray when it's supper time, and you must pray when it's dinner time. Don't be the only time you pray when you gather around for a meal and, and you eat. Make sure that we pray every single moment of every single day, because I'm telling you, prayer changes 
things. Liking, ooh, help me on this one. I said this this morning. I didn't get any backlash, but I'm going to say it again on this one. Liking a post on Facebook and say you're praying or throwing up emoji hands doesn't mean you're praying. Doesn't mean you're praying. Throwing up prayer hands on Facebook doesn't mean you're praying. I hope you do. I hope you do when so-and-so needs a need. You don't, you don't put emoji hands or say prayers, and you go on about your day. Stop and pray. It doesn't take long. You don't even have to stop. Drive down the road in your car and pray for this person. While you're sitting at your desk twiddling through Facebook, get off Facebook and pray. Whoops. Pray. We have got to get back to the root of what God has called us to do, and that is to pray. What does prayer do? Prayer gives us hope. We need hope in our lives today. This world is full of negativity. We must be the light of the world. Do something positive today and pray. We were getting ready to go to Louisiana last two weeks ago. We went to Sam's to pick up the, the, the load of food that we were taking. And then the guy that was helping load our cart made this statement, and it has really stuck in my spirit. He said, bad things don't have to happen to do good things. And I thought, wow, what a statement. The only reason we went to Louisiana was because they, were in help. they needed help. So we loaded up 20 people, fed 4,000 meals in two days. But we wouldn't have went if something bad wouldn't have had to happen. Bad things don't have to happen for, good thing, for us to do good things. We must be the light of the world. We must do good things every single day. Why can't we load up a group and go down to the park and just feed people just to feed them? We've got to be the light of the world. It gives us hope in an eternal father. It gives me hope that my children will be saved. It gives me hope that your body will be healed. There's many that are sick today that are watching or have watched. But I want to tell you this morning, but by your stripes, by his stripes, we are healed. This virus did not catch God by surprise. He knew what was going on years before it even happened. How many are watching today need some help? I need it. Here's what I want you to do. I want you, one, to either comment in the section below your prayer need. I want you to personally text my cell phone your prayer need, and I want you to do that now. I've got a list this morning from the 830 service. There's so many needs in our church. And at the end of service, we're going to anoint that list with oil, and we're going to pray because that's what Scripture tells us to do. So if you're watching this morning and you've got a prayer need, comment in, the, in, in below or text me and let me know. But we've got to start praying for each other. My hope is not in man, money, and possession. My hope is in Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of my faith. Prayer gives us healing. By his stripes we are healed. Whether it's physically or mentally, you can be healed this morning. We turn to prayer because it's the most personal way to experience God, to encounter him, and to grow in his knowledge. Where, when should we have a prayer meeting? I talked about this earlier, and it really stirred me. We had a prayer meeting last, I don't know, one day last week. I don't even know what day it was. Had a prayer meeting last week because there were so many people in our church that were sick. There were so many people that needed healing. And we prayed. There was about 50 people here that prayed. The next day, after Pastor Dave having a fever for 13 days in a row, the fever broke. Coincidence? I didn't think not. Same day, Candace DeMint's in the ER, in the in ICU, not doing well. We get a text next day, she's doing better. Coincidence? I think not. Prayer changes things. But bad things don't have to happen for us to pray. I'm going to get a little closer. Bad things don't have to happen for us to pray. We should pray daily. We should pray every single day. Day. Don't wait till you get a bad doctor's report to say, I'm going to start praying. Don't let, don't let sickness bring on praying. Don't let your children being, being bad or doing bad things bring on praying. Pray every single day because prayer changes things. What does prayer do? Prayer pushes back the devil. I love this one. Prayer pushes back the devil. The enemy has to flee at the name of Jesus. Satan is under our feet. We have the power in the name of the Lord. Hell trembles at the name of Jesus. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Prayer is our weapon against Satan. He is defeated and sickness is defeated. The Bible is the sword of our spirit, but our weapon is prayer against Satan. Satan hates it when we pray. 
He can't stand it when we pray. And I, I've been thinking over the past couple of weeks, why is, why is this sickness, why, why is it happening? What's going on? I really don't know why it's going on. And I don't know why it's kind of decided all of a sudden to, to kind of come to our church and, and, and I don't really say attack, but come upon our church. I, and, I, and, I, and I kind of think this is it. It's because we're up to something. We were up to something. We were shaking things that didn't need to be shaken. We were knocking some dust off some Bibles that hadn't been dusted off in a long time. And there were people starting to read their word. And there were people starting to come in. And the devil got a little scared. Said, I don't know about Oak Park. Oak Park's doing some things, man. we got to be careful with them. Let, let's watch out. I'm going to tell you something, devil. And I'm going to tell you something, Oak Park. What he meant for evil, God's been turned for good. When all this shakes out and everybody's healed and it's going to be very, very soon and we're back in these four walls of this church, watch out, devil. Watch out, Mobile County. Watch out, Mobile, Alabama. Watch out, Alabama. Watch out, world, because Oak Park is coming. Pray, because it changes things. In Psalms 50 and 15, it says, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will glorify me. I wrote this quote down. I've had this quote in my Bible with me many, many years. It's, it's the word push. But push stands for pray until something happens. A lot of times in life, we pray for two or three days, and, and either it, it doesn't get answered the way we want it to get answered, or it doesn't get answered at all, and we stop praying. I said earlier, pray without ceasing. Pray daily. Pray until. Pray until you get your answer. Pray until you get your miracle. Pray until your sons and daughters come home. Pray until something happens. Never stop praying. Don't uh, never stop praying. Pray without ceasing. Pray continually. Pray until something happens. May not be your time, but it's coming. Your healing is coming. Your sons and daughters are coming home. Your marriage is coming back together. Never stop praying. If you mean business, other things can wait. I want to stay on this just for a moment. If you mean business with God and you mean business in your prayer life, your hobbies can wait. Your things can wait. Other things can be put on the back burner. Right now, I feel like God's on the back burner and everything else is up here. And God's trying to get our attention, church. He said, it's now is the time to get on your knees, fall on your face, fall before my feet and say, God, I'm here. I need you. It's time to put God in the front, put everything else in the back. Prayer changes things. Find you a place away from all the noise and distractions and talk to God. I'll confess my sin. I did it in the 830 service. I'll do it now. I tried to finish up preparing for this sermon yesterday, and yesterday was opening day of college football season, and everybody was excited, and, and I had worked on it through the week, and I was just trying to go through and kind of really study and kind of get some more notes and put a little bit more in this little brain of mine. But, but every time I went to study, the announcer on the TV would, would scream, and I'd look up, and I'd look, and then I'd go back down again. And, try to, and I'd look up, look, and I thought, man, what am I trying to do? What's more important? This sermon or a crazy football game? And I think that's where we are in our life today. There's so many more things that are more important than God that we say, God, I'll get to you when I need you. God, help us. And that's, that, that, that's, and you see it, and I see it. People don't pray until they need something. When something happens, then they fall on their face at this altar and say, oh, God, I need you. But when everything's good, we don't even pray. We don't even crack open our Bible. We just sit here and say, oh, God, I'm, I'm okay, I'm good. But let something happen in your life. Let your family get sick. Let your children get sick. Let something happen that's devastating in your life and see what you do. You'll pray all night. You'll run to this altar and pray. But when things are good, you just kind of sit back there and look and wonder and see what's happening. When people are in this altar, stop what we're doing out in the congregation and pray. I may get in trouble for that, but that's okay. Too many times it's altar service and we leave. That's the most important part of the service. Nothing else matters at that time. Whether we're going to eat or we're going to Sunday school or wherever we're going, just stop. The most important part of the service is the altar call. If you don't have a need, stay and pray for somebody. God, help me. Stay and pray for somebody. Stay in your seat, respect them, and say, I'm praying for them because you know what? 
Next week it may be you in the altar and everybody else leaves on you. We've got to pray for one another. And I may be in trouble. That's okay. Pray for people. People need prayer. When people look up and everybody's gone, what's it telling them? That we don't need each other. We need each other. I need you and you need me. Period. Plain and to the point. Prayer. Because it changes things. And I lost my spot. I got so happy up here. He is waiting to hear from you this morning. I believe there's a shift in the atmosphere. It may be doom and gloom, but joy comes in the morning. Your marriage may be flipped upside down, but joy comes in the morning. Your children may be lost and and going to hell. Joy comes in the morning. You may be sick in your body and hurting, but joy comes in the morning. Prayer changes things. Prayer changed me. I don't deserve to be standing up here this morning. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to be standing on this pulpit at Oak Park Church of God, 3321 Solid Road. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. But thanks be to God, I had two parents that loved me enough to pray for me, grandparents that I heard praying for me. And look where I am today, not to pat myself on the back. I give all the glory to God. But prayer changed me, and prayer can change you if you will get on your knees and humble yourself and pray to him this morning. Use the breath that God has put in your lungs to speak life and not death. Every breath you take was given from God. It's a gift from God. It's not guaranteed the next breath. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. Live today like it's the last day on earth. But stop speaking so much negativity into people. Speak positive. Speak life. Be the light of the world. Stop being the darkness. There's so many darkness things going on right now. Be the light of the world. Don't waste your breath on negative things or negative people. I'm going to say that again. Don't waste your breath on breath on negative things or negative people. Negative people aren't worth it. Their soul is worth it, but don't get in an argument with people that are always negative. Just pray for them. They can't help it. It's how they're made. But we're different. We're set apart. We're not supposed to be like them. Yeah, is this world crazy? Absolutely. But what are we going to do about it? We're going to sit and feel sorry for ourselves, or are we going to get up and do something about it? Be a difference maker. Do something different. Be who God called us to be. Prayer must be a priority. Prayer must be a priority. Prayer can't be something that we do only when we need to hear from God. Prayer must be something that we do every single day, all day long. Do I pray all day long? No, I don't. I'm going to confess mine to you. But God has put this in my spirit so strongly. So strongly. He woke me up this morning at 3.30 this morning, and I just started praying. Prayer must be a priority. Must be the first thing we do in the morning. Pray for your family. Parents, I want to say this and strongly encourage this. Grandparents, if the parents ain't doing it, you do it. Let your children see you pray. Let your children hear you pray. Gather your family around you and pray. It's the most fundamental thing we can do as Christians is pray. Pray. It's the most important thing we can do. Prayer brings forth Scripture in you. The more we pray, the closer to God we get. Preaching is great. Visiting the sick is great. Serving is great. Even quoting Scripture is great. But the most important thing I can do for you is pray. That's the most important thing you can do for me is pray. Pray until something happens. Pray until there's a shift. I really believe in my spirit and feel in my spirit that there's a shift coming. The winds are blowing. Things are fixing to change. Things are fixing to get better. Yes, we live in the greatest world in the world ever. Yes, yes. America is awesome. United States is great. But it can be better. But there's a shift coming. It's coming. The wind is fixing to blow, and things are absolutely fixing to change. Prayer changes things. Prayer puts things in motion. Prayer shows us two promises that God has given us. Number one is, He promised to heal our bodies. He says, by your stripes we are healed. And then He says, heal our land. He says, if my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will heal their land. It's simple. 
We make this thing so difficult, but it's very, very, very simple. All we have to do is pray. Am I telling you everything's going to be okay when you pray? No. Probably the more you pray, the harder the devil's going to try to attack you. But guess what? You've got a foundation to stand on, which is prayer. Pray every single day. Philippians 4 and 6, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but pray about everything with prayer and supplication. What does anxious mean? It means to be upset. God is saying you don't have to be anxious about anything, but pray because I'm in control. He has all the answers. Stop trying to figure this stuff out on your own. I see it all the time. I see it all the time. When things happen, we get in difficult situations, we try to figure this out on our own. And God's like, no, 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 stop. Stop. Get on your knees and pray. It's very simple. It's very simple, but we make it so, so difficult. Even when we don't see it, he's working. Even when we don't feel him, he's working. He never stops. He never stops working for you. When you go to bed at night, he's working on your behalf. When you get up in the morning, he's working on your behalf. We've got to stop and pray. Prayer is the only thing that's going to help us today. Put it all at the table. Lay it at his feet. Give him your kids, your spouse, your job. Give him everything. With thanksgiving, I want to go back to that point again. With thanksgiving, every time we go to God doesn't mean that we need something. Every time we pray, we don't have to ask God for something. Every time we go to God in prayer, God, I need this, and I need this, and I need this, and I need it by then. No, 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 don't. Go to God first with thanksgiving. Go to God first with a thankful heart. Thank him for the things that you have. Be grateful for the things that you have. Thank him for the small things so he can do big things. Don't do asking for the big things before you've even thanked him for the little things. You say, man, you're crazy. It's the way it is. It's the little things. It's the little things that are important. I mean, you brushed your teeth this morning, I hope. Thank God for a toothbrush. You turn your light switch on this morning, you had electricity. Thank him for the little things, the things that are, that are small, that are little. Thank him for those things. God is in control. Be careful. Ooh, Lord, help me on this one. Be careful. I didn't even talk about this this morning. Man, I skipped the best point. Be careful about not complaining, grouping, or whining, or crying to God. Be careful about not complaining, grouping, whining, or crying to God. God knows your problems already. God knows what's wrong. Don't got to go, oh, God, I need <laughs> poor pitiful me. No. Go to God with thanksgiving. Be grateful for what you have. Be grateful for the things that you have, not what you don't have. Go to him with thanksgiving. I'm ahead of myself. Give him praise and give him honor. Be thankful more than anything couple of scriptures I want to hear. Isaiah, Isaiah 41 and 10. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my mighty right hand. Jeremiah 29 and 12. We all know Jeremiah 29 and 11 for I know the plans I have for you. But the next verse says this. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Once again, very simple. Very simple. We make it so difficult. We make it so hard. It says it very clearly. Then you will call on me, come to me and pray, and I will listen to you. God is waiting to hear from you. God wants to hear your voice this morning. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always. Once again, we go back to praying always. Pray without ceasing. Pray until something happens. Pray continually. Once again, give thanks in all circumstances. Not when just things are difficult. We don't need to pray. I don't know why I can't get off this because I feel like this is where we are as the church, not our church, maybe some in our church, but the church in general. The only time we pray is when we need something. Shame on us. Why do we do that? I don't know. Maybe it's human nature. Maybe we don't feel like we need God when we're on top of the world. I need God every minute of every day. I don't care if things are great or things are awful. I need God. 
Give thanks in all, for this is God's good Lord. Is it because He's commanding us to do it? Give thanks in all circumstances. This is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Matthew eleven twenty eight through thirty. Come to me, who all who all are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and a humble heart, and you will find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's calling you to come. Come to him. Pray to him. Listen for his voice this morning. God wants to hear from you this morning. Once again, if you've got a prayer need, please comment in the section below. Text me. Let me know. We're going to have prayer here in just a moment for the needs on the screen. There were some that were texting in between services. I've added them to the list. I think Brandon's got some more back there with him. He's going to bring them to me. We're going to anoint them with oil, and we're going to ask God to be with us. So I'm going to close with this. Please don't leave. This is, I'm not finished. I'm just I'm getting to the end. I'm kind of trying to land the old airplane. Five conditions for prayer. We should have a proper place for the calling upon the Lord. When we get alone in our secret place, find you a place where you can get alone with God. Don't let it be sitting in the middle of the living room trying to watch TV and playing on your phone. That's not a time to pray. Get along with God. Get with Him. Get along with, by yourself and listen to the voice of God. And I'm going to say this. We need to listen more than we pray. I think I said it last time I was up here. God gave us one mouth and two ears. Instead of talking so much, stop and listen. Listen to the voice of God. Listen for what God's called you to do. Listen to, to what God is telling you to pray for. Maybe God's trying to give you an answer, but you won't stop long enough talking, so listen. Stop talking and listen. Find a place that you can listen to God. Number two, we should have a proper purpose for prayer. What's your purpose in praying? Why do you pray? Number three, we should have a proper relationship with our Father. Before you start praying, you better make sure you're saved. If you're watching this morning, you say, what in the world does that even mean? That means Jesus lives in your heart. I'm going to be very simple and transparent. That's what it means this morning. If that's you and you say, Pastor Shane, I'm not even saved. First of all, you need to fall on your knees and say, God, forgive me for my sins. I'm a sinner. Please come into my heart and make me whole. Save me, I pray. In Jesus' name. It's very simple. But you've got to make sure that you're in a proper relationship with God. And number four, we should have a proper faith in our Father that being sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father would definitely give whatever we ask. Make sure our faith is strong. This is in the Bible, we have the faith of the grain of a mustard seed. If you've ever seen a mustard seed, that's smaller than the end of a pen. And some of us watching, and even myself sometimes, we don't have that much faith. We pray, but we don't believe. And then number five, we should have a proper, rather clean heart. Make sure your heart's pure. Make sure your heart is strong. Make sure your heart is where it needs to be. Make sure your life is lined up with God's purpose and plan. Pastor David talks about this all the time, about the belt. Make sure that everything's lined up. I got my belt on so it cuts my shirt in, makes my buttons go down the center of my chest, keeps everything up, be grounded. Be pure. This is free. Don't be fake. Don't be fake. Don't be one thing on Sunday and be a hypocrite on Monday. Don't. There's too many people depending on you. There's too many people depending on you. I'm depending on you. I'm depending on you that you'll pray for me. And I hope you're depending on me to pray for you. Guys, it's the only way we're going to make it in this world that we're living in. It's prayer. Prayer changes things. Prayer gives us a foundation. Prayer gives us strength. Prayer gives us anointing. But we've got to pray. We've got to pray one for another. When you hurt, I hurt. There's people in our church today that are hurting. There's people in our church today that are sick. There's people in our church today that need to hear from God. There's people in the 830 service that says, Pastor Shane, I need a job. 
There's people that need physical healing. There's people that need mental, mental healing. There's people that need jobs. There's people that need finance and miracles. And this world needs hope. We're the hope, church, I'm telling you. We're the hope. Across the solid rock, I stand on other greatest sinking sand. The church needs us. Excuse me, the world needs us. They're looking for answers. They're looking for you. They know you're a Christian. Stop trying to hide. They know what you believe. Stop trying to be fake. God has called you to be different, to be set apart. So today, be who God's called you to be. The world is hurting. They're looking for answers. They're looking for answers. They're looking for drugs and alcohols and, and protests and, and all these things. They're looking for answers. We all know the answer, and his name is Jesus. Share it today. Share it with somebody. Be the light in the dark world. People need you. There's people that are on watching online this morning that they're depending on you. They look up to you. So today I say, be the difference. Be the difference. If you got a request, please, please post it really, really quick. I think Brandon's got a list. This list is growing. <laughs> There's hurting people, church. There's people that are hurting. There's people that are depending on you to pray. One of my pet peeves is this, is when I ask somebody to pray and I find out they don't. Just tell me you can't or tell me you won't. But people are depending on you to pray. They're depending on you to, to, to intercede for them. It may be you next week calling him and saying, hey, I need you to pray for me. Do our part, church. Do our part and pray. God is here to answer our prayers. He's here to give us hope. But we've got to pray this morning. There's several needs this morning. They're coming in. Two lists full of needs this morning, church. Church, it's time to get real. Chris, I'm sorry you're still playing, but I'm in the spirit right now. It's time for us to get real. We played games and we played church for too long. We played it for too long. We come in, we sit, we leave, and it's the last thing we think about church till we come back the next week. It's time. It's time, church. Now is the time. If there's any other time in the world that we're living in today, it's now. It's now. Now is the time. Fall on your knees and pray. Church, we've got to pray like we've never prayed before. We've got to pray because there's sons and daughters that are dying and going to hell. There's spouses dying and going to hell. There's marriages that are being shaken apart. God's trying to wake us up. Now is the time. Today is the day. Do it today. Do it today. Kaylin Cliff Brownlee, Diana Hammock, Renee Kennedy, Susan and Mark Fillers, Donald and Dorothy Whitney, Teresa Walker, Ashley Barnes, Theta Clark, our church family, Tracy Adams, her husband needs a job, our finances, Madison needs a miracle, Kevin Huff's, Karen Huff's family, Richard Busby, David and Lenora Ray, uh, on my phone earlier was, 
Let me look over these. Darla Langham. Brody um, Morgan needs a touch. Greg Langham's family. Ian Finney needs a job. Angie Dempsey's going back to Houston uh, on October the 13th for an MRI. I believe in a healing. Sydney Kennedy. Taylor Crane, need, Taylor Crane needs a, um, a healing. Now's the time, church. Anthony Grouch's post, my mom needs a healing. And to be cancer-free, I claim it in Jesus' name. Daphne Overstreet just says, my family is sick and is in need. Donna DeMint, we've been praying. Candace needs our prayers. Now's the time, church. Now's the time. Now's the time to rise up and be what God has called us to be. Now's the time to be the church. Now's the time. God is good. He is on the throne. His mercy endures forever. But I need Him more. As that song said earlier, Lord, I need You more. More than the air I breathe, Lord, I need You more. Prayer sees our sons and daughters come home. Prayer finds the helpless to find hope. Prayer makes miracles take place. And prayer makes the walls fall down. Prayer changes things. As we pray this morning, I'm going to ask you wherever you are to just stretch your hands toward your screen. Whether it's your TV screen, your phone, your your iPad, whatever you're watching on this morning. And I just want you to pray. God's in control. If you're watching this morning, you need to be saved. I just want you to come in. You can even text the word, the number 251-333-1674. You can text the word prayer. I think we had one come in on pastor's line a while ago, and I know I'm taking time, but I want to make sure every need is spoken about. Prayer. Prayer. Donald Amit just texted me and said, Candace, we're playing for supernatural healing in that girl's body. She's a fighter and so are you. We're fighters. We're fighters. We don't quit. We won't quit. So if you will, stretch your hand this way. Stay on to the end. Don't leave. I can see who's leaving. We start praying and numbers start dropping. God help our souls. Oh, that could be us. It could be you that needed prayer. Pray, saints. Pray, saints. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, God, to stand behind the pulpit, God, and bring your word. I pray, Father God, Lord, that I get your approval, not man's approval. I pray, God, I pleased you this morning. But, Father God, I fall right now, God, on my knees. And I ask you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, to heal everyone that needs to be healed this morning. Father God, I fall at your feet, Lord. And I say, mighty God of heaven, heal this land, God, we pray. Heal this land, Lord, I ask. Father God, heal every need, God, that needs to be touched. God, from every person that's sick, God, of this, of this virus, God, for every person that's sick of cancer, God, for people that need a job, for marriages that need to be put back together, God, I fall at your feet and I say, God, your will be done. Your will be done. Heal today, God, I pray. Lord, heal our pastor this morning, I ask. God, touch his body, God, for a supernatural, complete healing. God, touch Candace DeMint this morning, Lord. God, heal her body. God, there's so many others, God, that I've already named, God. I'm asking you, God, as I lay my hand upon them, that, God, they will feel the supernatural strength and healing, God, go through their body. Father, we love you today. We thank you, God, for the wonderful opportunity, God, to be at your house. Even, God, if we're watching through a camera. 
God, we can say it was good to be in the house of the Lord today. Father, we thank you for what you've done. God, for what you're going to do. And we ask you, God, to be with us. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen.